Hello friends, welcome to my channel Plant Science for you. In this video, we are going to see different components of uh, biometrical techniques and as well as the polygenic variations and its assessment. So stay tuned and watch the video till later. In the previous two video, we have talked about introductory statistics, some of the introductory statistics and as well as the experiment, different experimental designs like RB, DCRD, LSD, etc. If you have not watched those, please go and watch video link in the description. In this video, we are going to talk about two most important, what are the applications or we can say the components of the biometrical techniques, what are the different components, how can we use those components in our planning or plan making, plan breeding methods, analysis of different traits, etc. And after that, we can see that the, what are the polygenic variations and how we can assess those polygenic variations using metrogilp analysis and as well as the DISCO statistics. Stay tuned and watch the video. In the first video, we have talked about different components of uh, applications of biometrical techniques. Firstly, we have uh, seen the how to assess the polygenic variation. And in this video, we will talk about metrogil analysis and discuss statistics uh, by which we can assess this polygenic variation. After that, uh, in the next video onwards, so you will see the determination of the yield component or parent selection. Uh, we can uh, select different components which are contributing the yield, contributing to the yield directly or indirectly. We can select those characters and according to this, uh, we can select the parent. We can do this by correlation analysis, path coefficient analysis, discriminant function analysis, etc. After that, in the third component, we will see how to uh, assess the gene action um, and how to define using those gene action, what, are, what will be the breeding methods. Uh, such as if there is an additive gene action is present in the character we are going to do in our breeding method, we can use the mass selection, progeny selection, etc. But if there is a present of non additive gene action, we can go for heterosis breeding. This way we can plan our breeding method. After that, if we are seeing about different uh, varietal adaptation uh, models, how uh, a variety is adapting in a particular environment. We can do this by uh, Everhart Russell model, Finlay Wilkinson model, Parkinson John Jinx model, Freeman Parkinson model in the subsequent videos. As we know that the analysis of a polygenic A character is based on the first order statistics that is the mean and as well as the variance and covariance that is the second order statistics. We know that in, in the breeding we use pure lines U1 and two parents p1 and p2 we use the pure lines to produce the f1 so in this characters if there is is present in any variation is present in these lines like p1 p2 and f1 this variation will not be heritable it will be due to environment only that means if we go for selection of any variations we have to go for further subsequent generations like f2 and F3 and so on. What do we mean by the most fit individual are those individuals which are close to the population mean that is X bar and uh, this is an intermediate we will say those characters or those individuals as a most fit individual. Now if we see the most important uh, in this sense the method we divided the polygenic variation into two components like one is the free variability and another one is the potential or hidden variability uh, based on their availability for selection. Then we can see here this, there is a particular difference between the free variability and then the potential uh, variability or hidden variability. In case of free variability, the variability is expressed or exposed to the natural selection. That means we can easily access or uh, these variations are uh, easily exposed to the nature. But uh, in case of potential, there is a potential but it is hidden. That means it is not exposed or it is hidden actually. If we talk about the free variability, it is those variability which are the extreme phenotype. That means capital A, capital A, capital B, capital B, capital C capital C or small a, small a, small b, small b, small c. So it is the extreme phenotypes. That means if we uh, put it in a graph, that means it will have like this. 
those extreme phenotypes which are available for selection those extreme phenotypes which are available for selection those we call as a variability and this variability in natural selection favors the intermediate one which are the intermediate then they will be favorable like this type of individuals will be gonna be favorable by nature whereas the potential variability there is a potential but they are not the extremes uh, they are like example for example if we see the heterozygote is the capital a cap small a capital b small b because of homozygote we have capital a capital small a capital uh, small b small b and small a small a uh, something is their mistake so uh, it will be capital a capital a small b small b and small a small a capital b capital b uh, this type of variety you can ask that how this can be utilized you can mix utilize or express only after crossing uh, crossing with each other like uh, following segregation capital a capital b if we cross them with small a small a capital b capital b we will get capital a capital x capital b capital b or small a small a small b small this way we can find the extreme genotypes and in the subsequent generation followed by segregation and recombination we can have those variability expressed in the nature now we have found the three different scientists first one is on method who have given this genetic variability in two parts there is a heritable fixable and heritable but non fixable that means they are due to environmental component now what fisher does did he divides this uh, genetic variation into additive dominance and epistatic variance after the swell right who have divided this uh, genetic variation into additive component and non additive component how to study these gene actions uh, how to compile or how to get those numbers that how much uh, contribution of the additive variance and dominance variance we will see in the subsequent video where we discuss about the gene action uh, using di allele tri allele partial di allele etc now if we are going to talk about we, are, we talk about the how to assess those polygenic variations there is a two main approaches we use in the mostly in case of statistics there is the one is the metrogil analysis and another one is the discrete statistics the metrogil analysis was mainly given by the anderson and in case of discrete statistics it was given by mahalana base and it was actually used or applied by c r rao these are two indian scientists these are two indian scientist who have a big or much impactful contribution in terms of this discussed statistics now if we talk about the some differences um, uh, between this metrogil analysis and discussed statistics because do, both the uh, methods are used in case of polygenic variation analysis but their approaches are different in case of metrogil we see that the assessment is based on the morphological variation present in the germplasm line Whereas in this discussed statistics, the degree of divergence is the main uh, main component of measurement, and uh, it will help in the selection of genetically divergent parent in heterosis breeding. Suppose we are uh, crossing between P1 and P2. Uh, if we if they are most divergent, then we will have an F1 which is better than both the parent. This way we can select the parent by using this discussed statistics or using the value of discard value of those uh, parents if we see the metrogil analysis it is a semi graphic approach that means we use the graph like structure but it is semi graphic remember and another one is the discard statistic we use the discard uh, values that means we can use it as a numerical approach that means we have some discard values uh, which, is, uh, which is calculated using different statistics and uh, using those statistics we get those values described values and we uh, then we uh, compare those values with one genotype to the another and we measure the divergence the more the divergence there is a more possibility uh, to get the more variability now this metrical analysis is based on mainly the mean values that is the ones the first order statistics here we prepare a metrical chart we will see in the next slide and we can use the replicated as well as the unreplicated data in this metrical analysis. 
in case of um, discrete statistics we use the second order statistics where we use variance and covariance where we did do what we do the cluster diagram we use in metric group we use metric group chart and in discrete statistics we use discrete, uh, cluster diagram and here the only the replicated data can be used in for, for analysis in both cases the divergence or we can say the variation will be wide uh, where in case of uh, metrogil the different group indicate will indicate the deep wide range of variability but in case of uh, discussed at a different cluster which indicate deep wide range of genetic variability that means it will give us the more heterosis now if we see it is a metro metrogil uh, uh, metrogil graph uh, if we see like a uh, say five character if we are analyzing for five character like uh, the first one suppose first take two character which are showing the most variability like here we, we have taken the first one that is a bulls per plant bulls per plant and the second one character is, is a yield per plant and take those characters in x axis one x axis and another one is the y axis and other three factors three four and five anything maybe these four characters express in terms of rays this uh, round shape structure we call it as a gilf gilf okay and these are called as a rays when uh, these gilfs are suppose here we can say is a fully circled we call those genotype as a exotic genotype and if, we, if there is a something like this dotted uh, we can show that as a indigenous okay now likewise if we see if we can number with, uh, as we go along with the x axis we can number there is a low, low variation medium variation 1 2 and 3 Likewise, here is the low, medium, and high. Likewise, in case of rays, we can uh, give the number. This is the high rays. There is a three. Then this is two, and this one. This way, is we can uh, give the number. Now we, we see how to calculate. Suppose this, this genotype we are going to genotype here. We are going to calculate. This is in the x. Is the high coordinate. That means for the for the one number of first character there is a bowl flower plant, it is having three number. If you see for the second character that is the yield flower plant, that is also in the third axis, third third um, domain of the y axis. That means for that it will also get three marks. After that for the third character, if we see uh, this one, this rays, it is uh, about uh, uh, two marks. If we give it uh, as a two marks. Then for the fourth character, we if we give it as a three, and for the last one, we will give it as a two. That means it will compile to have three, six, eight, eleven, and thirteen. This way, I we can calculate this number. Likewise, it for these it is it will be different, something different. So like. Uh, if we see that is um, for x axis for the first character it is having in the first row first row that means one then in the second row for the y axis of the second character uh, second character it is two and uh, for the third character it is having a uh, two and for the fourth character it is having a uh, three and the last character for the last character uh, it will have also a one likewise one three five eight nine that means this have the nine value and this is of the 13 value that means these two like it is a b genotype having a difference of genetic variability this way we can uh, calculate those variability using this material in chart now if we see about the discover statistics we use the discover values for calculating uh, different variability genetic variability present in the genotype we use the cluster diagram cluster means presence of some uh, groups group of genotypes 
in one cluster suppose uh, this is the first cluster here there is a five genotype like a b c d and e those having a average uh, d square values of 6.4 for the second cluster there is a variable like uh, having five genotype like f g i j and k which is having the value 5.2 likewise for the uh, third it is having five for the fourth it is having 4.8 for six it is having 3.6 and five uh, sorry six it is having 6.6 and five it is having 4.1 these are all the d square values it is having now uh, if we compare between those a and b there is an intra cluster that means intra cluster if we uh, go there is there will be less variability present but if we see there is a variability present between the six you know six group of cluster and the first cluster there is a variability of 14 likewise in the 40 if the fourth uh, cluster and the fifth cluster there is a variability of present is a 15.8 this kind of variability or variance present in the discrete values this indicates these genotypes likewise like four and five if we select one parent from uh, four and one parent from the uh, five this parent will have the most difference or divergent uh, values that means wide range of variability will be present there and from crossing between them we can get the maximum heterosis this way you utilizing the discrete values like discrete values we can using the cluster diagram we can make some clusters of different genotypes which are having uh, the similar type of uh, discrete values we can make them in a cluster and now we can uh, uh, we can differentiate or we can uh, analysis between them this way we can uh, devise or we can select two parents with diverse or genetic variability present in them wide range in wide range and we can use them in case of uh, what we say that the heterosis breeding so this video is up to this and thank you for watching subscribe my channel thank you